All right, I'm back. All right, now look. Today, I'm finna show y'all how I make crab rangoon. And it's honestly really simple. It's one of my favorite little side dishes, one of my favorite appetizers to get from my local Chinese spot, but sometimes I just feel like making it myself. So let me show y'all how I do it. You're gonna need black pepper, garlic powder. Today I'm cooking mine in canola oil. You can cook it in vegetable oil or you can air fry it. I have a separate video available on my YouTube channel where I make a garlic and herb crab ragoon. And in that video, I cook them in the air fryer. So if you want to see how to prepare them in the air fryer, go check that video out. You're going to need some rice vinegar, one block of cream cheese, some green onion, two packages of soy sauce, some wonton wraps, and then of course the imitation crab. You see that? You see that? You see that? Don't ask me for the damn ingredient list. Now, come on. Do yourself a favor and make sure that you have your cream cheese out of the refrigerator about 10 or 15 minutes prior to you starting to cook. So that way it can be somewhat soft so that it's easier to mix everything in it. Again, I'm using eight ounces of the imitation crab. If you want to use real crab meat, you can. But to be honest, that's not really what this dish is. It's just, it's not going to taste the same if you use real crab meat. So just understand that if you're going to the Chinese spot and you're getting imitation crab meat, it's made with imitation crab. And I'm using full eight ounces and I'm going to chop this down into a really, really small mince. Now, because I'm making a small batch today, I'm actually only going to use one dry measuring cup full of the imitation crab meat. As you can see, I've chopped it down to a nice small mince. I'm going to use the rest of that into like a salad or something like that. But I'm only using one block of cream cheese, so we're only going to add in one cup. That'll be more than enough. You can honestly add in as many or as little green onion as you want. I do not want it too onion heavy, so I'm only going to use about this much here. And even once I mince it down, if it looks like it's too much, then I'll probably end up measuring it out and telling you guys exactly how much I use. So let me chop this down and then I'll let you guys know. That actually turned out to be the perfect amount. And I only used the greens. I did not use the white. So now I'm going to go on ahead and add that to the bowl as well. Add in your crushed black pepper. Just a dash of garlic powder. Not too much. A little bit goes a long way. We're going to add in one fourth of a teaspoon of the seasoned gourmet rice vinegar. And I'm going to start off with adding in one pack of the soy sauce. Give it a mix. Once I taste it, if I feel like it needs any additional salt, then I will add in the second pack at that given time. I like to then go in with the fork and mix it all together. I've gone in and given it a taste and decided that I do want to go on ahead and add in the second pack of soy sauce. So now I'm going to go on ahead and give that a full mix. And now that I have the saltiness exactly where I want it, I'm going to go in with a small pinch of sugar and a pinch of accent or MSG, but that's optional. All right, so assembling the wontons is actually really, really simple. You guys saw the pack of wonton that I had. It's very, very thin. For all of you bastards that's about to say something smart, honey, I was out in the garden yesterday and got stabbed by a bunch of um, uh, bushes that had uh, thorns and stuff on it. Um, so I'm going to take this, lay it down like a diagonal, right? I'm going to take warm water. You can use egg if you would like, but today I'm going to use water. I'm going to take my two fingers and I'm going to go around the edges this is what's going to work as our glue. I'm going to take our mixture and you see the spoon. I'm going to take about a teaspoon worth. You do not want to overfill them. You're going to put it directly in the center. If you overfill it, it will burst and you don't want that. Get yourself a wet rag or something so you can keep your fingers nice and clean as you're going along. You're going to take both sides, come up to the center like so. Pinch both sides up like that. Then you're going to take the next side, pinch that up like that. So now it looks like that. Turn it on the other side. Do the exact same thing. Come up, pinch. So now it looks like this. Now you just go in and just seal it up. And make sure that as you're sealing it up, you're pressing down just a little bit and making sure that everything is nice and close. And then now you've made yourself a nice little wonton crab, crab ragoon. And like I said, that little bit of water will help seal these up. So I'm gonna repeat that process. I'm gonna make a bunch of these up. And then after I do this, I actually like to sit it in the refrigerator for about five or 10 minutes before I fry them so that it can kind of firm back up again. So let me go on ahead and get all these together and I'll be back soon. All righty, you guys. So this is what they look like once they are all done. Absolutely beautiful. This is how you kind of really make any type of wonton. But of course, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say I'm a professional wonton maker, but I think I kind of got it down. But anywho, 
Um, I'm only going to fry up this amount right now because I actually think that they are best when made fresh. But what I also like to let you guys know is that this mix makes a lot of crab rangoon. So as you guys can see, I am going to continue using the filling and I'm going to continue to make them. I'm going to fill up this tray and then place this in the freezer. Once they start to get frozen, I will then transfer them over to a frozen Ziploc bag. And then that way I don't have to worry about them sticking. And then I will have Crab Rangoon on standby whenever I want them. So just letting you know, you will have a lot of filling. So you can either choose to fry up a bunch of them and have it for a party, or you can do like I do, make all of them up, fry however many you want at the time, and then freeze the rest. Now that my oil is at temp, I'm going to go on ahead and add these bad boys right to the oil and let the bad boys start to fry. And once again, everything in it is fully cooked. So once they turn golden brown, you'll be able to take them out. And as you can see, they take no time to cook, you guys. Just be very gentle as you're tossing them around. I love to use this because if there's a side that is like trying to not brown properly and I need to kind of hold it over, I can hold it just like that so that it can brown fully, as you can see and then it'll stay kind of flipped down. But you know, once they're golden brown, you can take them on out. Oh my God, they are just absolutely delicious. My God. All right, y'all, these bad boys are nice and done. So now that they're golden brown, I'm gonna transfer them over to a wire rack so that any excess oil can kind of drip off. Turn that heat off, just like so. And I like to let these damn things cool down for a few seconds before I attempt to eat them or you will burn the living hell out of yourself. And just like that, you've made yourself some homemade crab rangoon. Serve it up with your favorite sweet and sour sauce. They are perfectly crispy, full of flavor. Mm, mm, mm. Let them cool off though before you eat them, chai. And I know y'all want to see me eat one of these damn things. Mm, mm, mm. Look at this. Tell me this don't look like this came from the local Chinese spot. Chai my God on today. Mm, mm, mm. Period. 